Hi, welcome to another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix. And on this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at a Commodore 64 1541 clone drive, known as known as the blue chip drive. Um, it's a BCD 5.25, um, just looking on the back. Um, it says 100% compa compatible with the Commodore 64, 1 to 8, plus 4, VIC 20, and everything's included in the box. So I picked this up off eBay quite a long time ago. And I haven't even bothered looking at it. So what I wanted to do this week is, is just um, open this box up, have a look inside it, open it up, clean the rails, clean the heads, and just to show you how to do that, I mean they're all pretty much the same, um, with the drive rails and cleaning up the heads, with a bit of uh, silicon grease in there, um, it does help, it makes the heads slide a lot easier and it makes it read the game, some of the discs easier. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to pop the lid off, have take a look inside, see what we've got inside that. See if there's anything familiar, and uh, yeah, check it out. See if it works. So, let's pull the get to it. Hi. What we're going to do is a bit of a video. Um, on it working, show, showing you what it was really. Then I started to take it out of the box, and I thought, no, no, I won't do that. I'll um, I'll put it back back in. I only slipped it out a couple of inches other side, you know, when I opened it up, and I thought mm, it looks quite nice in there. So I just thought I'd do sort of a bit of unboxing for you as well. So I'm just going to open this up now, and we'll see what we've got. I think one end is fastened down. No. And then he's open. I'll just try and slide this box off gently to see what we've got inside. So, here we are. First thing I can see, it looks a little bit yellowed around the top. I've not opened this, I've not tested it since I bought it, it's just been put away. We've got the full blue chip drive guide. It tells us all the errors, intact errors, little programs and stuff. You, you got all this with the original Commodore drives. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that looks a lot like a 1571 to me. <laughs> but there you go. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's really nice to have the user manual in there. So this is on the power supply. You can see there. We 220 volts, 9 volt out. It does look, have like a universal plug on it. It looks like an American plug or something like that that I see on there. Somebody's kindly dropped a little adapter inside so we can use that. Oh, look at that. It's a very strange looking plug. You don't normally see them on the Commodores, do we? Uh, yeah, before I do anything, I'm just going to put the multimeter on the end of there and make sure that we're getting the uh, correct voltage. It says output AC 16 volt and an AC 9 volt. So, I need to test that power supply before we plug this in. So I'll just set that to one side and we'll have a look at the drive. Lift that plastic away, it's not making any more noise. So, this is the blue chip drive, and if you notice, this lever goes the opposite way to what they normally do. And you know, you can see there, look where it's gone. This looks like a prime candidate for um, a retro bright. If you think I should retro bright it. Let me know in the comments. Um, we'll take a look, and we'll see about doing a video on retro brighting. So what I've just noticed with that 
if I look down this side, I don't know if you can see on camera or not there. I don't know if there's a big lot, but it's got damage. It's a shame. It's cracked in the bottom there, look. Looks like it's had some form of impact just around there. It's a real shame, is that? Well, we can have a look when we uh, take the top off. I don't really want to plug this in without checking the power supply and, and cleaning the heads because I don't know what's on the heads. It might do something to me. The discs. So it would be best just probably to pop it open and have a quick look inside. You can see on the back, we've got that proprietary plug there, look for the power. And you see real ports there. Um, you can't see there's a hole there. Looks like it would have been nice to have had a, a drive 8, drive 9 switch or something like that up there, but... But yeah, okay. So yeah. I can hear bits rolling around inside there, so yeah, I don't want to plug this on until uh, we've had a look inside. So yeah, that's the Commodore compatible floppy disk drive BCD 5.25. So we've had a quick look at that, we've seen the case it's broken on there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just pop over to the bench and pop the top off and have a look, we'll see what this rattling around inside there and give the heads and the rails a bit of a clean. Um, so I'll, I'll see you over there. So, as I said in the previous part of the video, I've never had one of these before, I've never seen one of these before, it's all new to me. Um, so what I'm just going to do now is just take the screws off the top and we'll take a look at this together. Um, just take that locked off. So, I'm hoping it's just these four on the outer edges here. And one there. I'll do my usual trick and just leave them in the hole for a minute. I'll take this one here. I want to be very careful with this case because it does look very brittle. I hope it's okay inside. Well, hopefully them screws should have just fallen out there. There's one. There's two, there's three, there's four. Yeah, they're all out. So, let's take this top off. Eee. Excited. Something different. Maybe I'm not taking this top off. Is there something else that holds it? Oh. <laughs> so there's six screws that hold this top case on. <laughs> As I said, I've never looked at these before. We're looking at it all new. <laughs> the more I'm looking at this as well, and all I can see cracks all over the place on this case, which is a real shame. But there we go. There. That one in there. Let's take this top off. Again, he says. Oh, we're moving now. Wow. Okay. I'll just set that to one side for a minute and we'll carry on taking some screws out by the look of it. Nice big shielding across the top. These feel different. I'm just going to put them ones in that pocket there. Let's remove the heat shield. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look clean? Wow. So I'm just focusing with the camera a little bit for you. That looks absolutely immaculate so I'm holding good hopes for this unit now I've seen inside it and it looks very 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 clean I still can't see how I'm gonna to get to the head though without taking that board out so let's take that off is anything actually holding that board this back plate by the look of it so do we lift that out does it come out? Yeah. Wow. Look at me see down there. 
Well, it looks like a cable. I don't know what's holding it there. Let's set this plug off. Screw there. Spotted one. I'll take that out. Again, I'm going to put that one just down in that box. That way. And that just might just lift up enough. Slide that back plate out. And set this front one off. Card out that way. And that looks also looks very, very, very clean. I don't know how good you can see there or not. Um, but I'm going to have a look at the heads. If you can't see very clear when I scope in with this camera, um, I'll put a picture up. So it does look fairly clean. I'm just going to put a bit of IPA on there and uh, lubricate them rails a little bit. I can see where the head runs. The head run at the bottom then. Wow, that's a big head. And then we'll have a look and see what some of these chips are. Let me have a look inside. Let's see what we can find with the rattling. Yep, bits of plastic look dropped out. That's okay, that's fine, as long as it's a little bit of plastic. I'm not going any further, I don't really want to take all this out um, because of how brittle it feels. So yeah, I'm just going to try and clean these off and then we'll put that board back on top and we'll have a look and see what the chips are on top. I don't know which this one is, I've never heard of it before. It looks like Mel 9501-40. Don't know what that is. It could be a CPU. The other ones are just a 74 LS. Logic chips. But again, it all looks good inside there anyway. So I'm just going to get the IPA. Good old cotton buds. I'm just going to go underneath that head. Just give it a bit of a clean. A little bit of dust in there, but nothing really to call anything. And the head does move on the tracks very well. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm liking this, it looks good. Let me just see if I can get some of that grease off. In fact, I don't even really think I need, need to take any grease off. It's, uh, yeah, it'll be a bit. All this is lithium grease, that's all I'm using. I'm just putting a bit on the table there, as you saw. I'm just going to feed a little bit on these legs and just mop it up. I don't think it's going to need it to be honest, but it's good maintenance, isn't it? You know. That feels nice and clean and smooth. Right, we'll put this cardboard back on. I don't know which way it went, but let's put this cardboard on. Looks good to me. Some great big capacitors on the back of that board there. No, I don't notice the camera cut out there. So all I've done is just position that board back on the top. I'm just going to take this little slide card for the back of it. I'm going to pop that back in now. Once the slide card down, just squeeze it in a little bit for the power switch. Let things feed through, and that's it. And we had that one, didn't we? That one screw that went right in there. So put that back in now. So let's have a look inside here. So this is your kernel ROM. Uh, it just says copyright 1986, blue chip, Electronics Incorporated. All rights reserved. So that I can see, you can see a circle underneath there, can't you? You see indentation, so it's an EEPROM is that. So that's got to be the kernel. Um, what have we got up here? We've got the LS74, 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 74, 74. This, so this, this is all logic, all the way around here. 
Almost, that cap looks like it's got it's breaking up. I'll have to have a look, see them. Let's see if we can pan down and let you have a look at that. That doesn't look very good. Just looks like a capacitor. But I don't know what values they'll be. Doesn't look like it's leaked, so um it's only capacitor. I suppose we can still test it with that in place. So with that said, that's another capacitor there. It looks like it's getting its coat coming off as well. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll have to look into them first. I think I might do before I try it. Hmm, I don't know. Let's see. So all this is logic. We've discovered that. These are my little pet hate capacitors that always lay down for some reason. I don't know why they lay down. I think they're just lazy capacitors. <laughs> you just see about time. They're just all laid down. There's no need for them to be laid down. Anyway. So this chip over here it says UM6522, so obviously that's the same as your 1541 disk drives, your 6522, that one's exactly the same, that's a 6502 processor, and we've got some more logic up this side. So looking inside there, it looks exactly like a clone, <laughs> well it is a clone, but it look, all the chips in the circuitry, it's everything that you would actually expect to see. In, in an original Commodore 1541 disk drive and I believe the, even the kernel there's only small increments altered um, and then all of the back of the kernel 60% of it apparently is what I was reading online is exactly the same so it, it would be interesting just to pop that off and dump it into the EEPROM burner and uh, see if we can write out and see what it is I might do that when, I've, uh, when I'm having a look at these capacitors I don't want to touch them too much because if I lose the names off them, I won't be able to find out what they are. Yeah. So, that being said, I need to go and test the power supply. I'm going to change them capacitors. Um, and then we'll take it over and uh, see if it actually works. Or do I just test it anyway? Decisions, decisions. Okay, so we'll see. Right, so I decided that I won't gonna bother changing them caps capacitors out yet. Um, reason being is I tested them and they, they seemed fine at the time, and I also tested the power supply. That's good as well. So I've got a few games. We've got Predator, and we've got Rampage, and we've got Operation Wolf, and I've also got some other games on here. I think that's just a test disc. So I think I'm going to put that test disc in first and we'll have a look see what happens. But first of all I want to start this thing up. So we should get an activity light. I don't know which one it is. I've not looked on the manual. So we should get an, a power light and we should get an activity light. So if we switch that on now. That's good. I could hear the drive spin up. So we'll just put the Commodore on. Not too bad. Let's try this disc. I'd rather put this in first rather than anything else. Um, let's type the load command. Let's have a look see what's on the disc first. I don't think there is anything on the disc to be honest. I think it's just a blank, but. Comma 8. Oh, this spins. We've got an activity light and we've got file not found. Great. So that's um, a no already. Let's put a star in there and see what happens. Put comma one. File not found. So okay. We'll try a different disc. So we'll try Operation Wolf. I'm going to turn the Commodore off. I'm going to enable Jiffy DOS because it's just easier. 
So it initiates okay, that's okay. So if I do dollar sign, is it? Dollar sign? No. Oops. Where? List. No? Okay. We'll try load. Star. Comma. Eight. Comma. One. Seems to be doing something. Oh, we're loading. Wow. Yay, we're loading. Operation Wolf. Sorry about the flishy flashy. And yeah, it's a technical term. Might take a while this, so I might, I might fast forward it. Let's just see how it goes. Great stuff, so that works, that's loaded up perfectly fine. Oh, that's awesome. I'm just going to switch that off again. I'm turning the lever the wrong way. I move it lever the same way as what you would expect to do on a Commodore 1541 and it's not. I'm going to leave Jiffy DOS on, it seems to load it faster, well not load it faster, but quicker command. Oh, yeah it is, seen. Seems to be loading fine. Just relatively quiet. I can just hear the this spinning, making a little creaky noise if you like, creak, 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 sort of thing. I think that's just the disc though. No, yeah, we're still loading. Oh, no, we're here, look. Seems to be a long loader, so I'll fast forward that. So yeah, that's another one that's loaded up. So it looks like that drive does not like that command from Jiffy DOS. Seems to load every time when uh, I'm typing the normal command in, but it doesn't like the Jiffy DOS command. Nice little drive. We've opened it up, we've had a quick check out inside it. We know it all works. That's absolutely fantastic is that. It's a lovely little drive. It's quiet as a mouse as well. Um, I am going to look into it later on and get this uh, retro brighted so it makes it all nice and good again. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can plastic weld inside the um, case to see if I can stop it from cracking anymore. And I'm going to change them capacitors out in there as well. But today I just wanted to test it and just make sure it were all okay and see what this little drive were about. So, if you uh, are interested in me, recording the video when I'm doing the retro brighting or changing the capacitors or even plastic welding the unit inside it if you if, if it's something that you want to watch let me know just drop me a comment and uh, we'll have a chat and see what I can do on that for you so once again thank you very much for watching another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix